Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Phototokas Mystery, Part 347. We're continuing with our lesson title, Cosmic Culmination, Part 3. <laughs> Scripture teaches the judgment cup shall come on the current rulers of darkness in the heavens. We mm -hmm. talked about this, that the judgment cup is not administered in the physical to the human race. It's administered to the Luciferians <clears throat> that are supporting, engineering the pseudo-reality which keeps the human race in bondage. In that respect, as they receive the influence, they become totally unstable, erratic, and ultimately they reach a stage where they are unable to proceed in, in what would be considered a cohesive way. This is why you're looking at the the facade beginning to crack, crumble, and dissemble. It hasn't anything to do with something you can perceive on this level. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the influences coming from unstable intelligences in the unseen level that affect those that are movers and shakers in this level. Yes. So, since we now <coughs> understand from yesterday that the physical is guided and dominated by the spiritual, even though people don't you know, recognize that part, we now see, therefore, that the daughters of the kings, the princes of the bride, are, as I understand it, spiritual erections. I'm going to use that word, it's not meant to be negative in any way, but they're spiritual erections, meaning they are not physical flesh. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. Mm. And therefore, yes. when we see the kings, the word was created, being populated, do we understand that the entire population of the heavens at the time of after the Great White Throne, is really what I'm saying, mm -hmm. will be of that nature. Well, yeah, everything will be on a spiritual um, component. What we're looking at here in the physical is all temporary. It's a copy, if you will, of things that are permanent in the spiritual realm. The temporary is a copy of the permanence of the spiritual realm, right? Yes. So the pseudos, and I noticed that you used that same word for YHVH mm -hmm. as you did for the enemy. Yes. Why would you use the pseudo for YHVH if that is a permanent? It's not. YHVH does not create permanency. Okay. He can construct in the spiritual realm, which he does. We read Ezekiel, the 10th chapter, that city, those people are all in the spiritual realm, but they're temporary. Mm -hmm. YHVH's construction, his dominion, his domain, but it's all basically a <clears throat> component that's constructed for a temporary purpose, dealing with the physical uh, and an ultimate physical conclusion. So then that raises the question, why does white 3 h and I presume Elohim, choose to visit the physical earth to perform physical functions on physical people when he could do everything through the pseudos that you're referring to? Depends on the situation, number one. Number two, you don't find Elohim operating in more than a very, very rare okay. time in the physical. You could count them on the fingers of one hand. When he appears at the Lord's baptism and makes his proclamation when he appears on the Mount of Transfiguration makes a proclamation but uh, Elohim uh, operates 99.999 tenths in the spiritual realm. Uh, does this imply that Elohim uses white as 
erection to perform works? Whenever it comes into a necessity that deals with his plan. Okay. Everything is earmarked to his plan. Mm -hmm. Anything outside of his plan, he has nothing to do with. Gotcha. <coughs> well, as much as I can, this would <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's see. <coughs> So what we're looking at here, one of the reasons it's so difficult to understand this is because creation, life, originates in the spiritual. Mm. This where we are now, this is the basement, this is the dumping ground. This is like trying to uh, comp contemplate, comprehend what's happening on the 82nd floor of the Empire State Building from the basement. Sure. So this is purely to... Qualified. There's no, there's no other it. reason that That's it exists. It. That's it. It was never meant to be a state of permanency in the life of the sons of God. Mm. Because everything that the Father does is a spiritual purpose, a spiritual comp composition, because, uh, well, because Elohim operates eternally. There's nothing eternal in the physical realm. Why would he waste his time doing something here when it could only be at the best temporary he has to limit himself shut himself down to operate in a, a, a raggedy uh, uh, desolate environment that's not him he's light he's purity he's perfection and even the sons of God when they reach a state of maturity they ain't going to operate for any protracted period of time here Paul Paul couldn't wait he said, the only reason I'm staying here is because you need me. When people die, they could come back. When you read Job, when uh, the, 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 the rich man tells Abraham, that, uh, not Job, when you're reading um, uh, Lazarus and the rich man, in Luke the 16th chapter, the rich man tells Abraham, send Lazarus back to talk to my brothers. Abraham did not say, well, he can't go back, he's dead. He said, no, he's not going to back, be, go back because he wouldn't be believed. Mm -hmm. The people that die never want to come back here. It's like you want to go to hell. When Samuel came back, he was miserable. Yeah. He said, what the heck did you call me back here mm -hmm. for? What do you want? Hurry up so I can get back you know, out of this. this. This place is so repugnant from a pure, spiritual, holy perspective that nobody... The only ones that reside here are the, the those that are dumped here, those that are d d totally corrupted, and they don't even want to be here. But they got no choice. You think Satan wants to walk up and down on the earth? He even wants to get back into the heavens. <clears throat> so this place is it's created to be a temporary zone for a limited purpose to get jump started in what God wants his sons to ultimately participate in. Mm -hmm. okay. Keeping that in mind, what we're finding out, the judgments and everything else that are taking place originate in the spiritual realm. We see the results of that here in the physical realm. You don't see anything manifesting, originating here in the physical. You can't see Satan. You can't see the angels. You can't even see the demons. Or you can comprehend all you can do is to feel the results of what they set in motion. When Elohim pronounces the judgment, Jeremiah 25 30, mm -hmm. do we understand therefore that first it will be in a, in a spiritual earth and spiritual cities and spiritual nations which will then translate into the prison? Into the no, just the opposite. As a matter of fact, we're going to touch on that okay. here. Jeremiah 25, verse 26. Let's turn there. <coughs> now, when you get to Jeremiah 25 and 26... What you're getting is the end of the <coughs> c 
cup judgment on the kings in the spiritual realm. Please continue. Well, you start in verse 17. I took the cup in the Lord's hand from 17 to 25. It's talking about all those that received the cup. And all the mingled people and all the kings of the land of Uz and all the kings of the land of the Philistines, Edom and Moab and the children of Amnon, all the way down to verse 25, and all the kings of Zimri and all the kings of Elam and all the kings of the Medes. So the judgment cup is spreading to the whole Luciferian mechanism that's driving this pseudo reality from 17 to 25 is the spiritual the influence of the judgment cup on the pseudo yes right. all of that and it's talking about these guys drinking and becoming unstable and stumbling and falling well they're the ones that are manipulating controlling the physical here where the humans are responding to the manipulation that's taking place there. Case in point, you get on the freeway. Why do these individuals start going erratic and doing all sorts of things that make absolutely no sense? Because they are incited to. Their minds are wide open to manipulation. They're frustrated they're to the point where they're ready to um, uh, <clears throat> just implode and the puppet master uses that because they feed off of the emotions they can get somebody to crash into somebody else and kill and he's got souls or whatever the energy is he feeds off of it it's all manipulation but what you get here is down by verse 25 is the effect of the judgment cup on the movers and shakers of the Luciferian pseudo reality. This thing is becoming more and more unstable because the guys that are running it are becoming more and more unstable because they're under judgment. Notice the connection here in verse 26. The last ones are going to be the principalities, the cosmocrators, kings of the north. And all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another. So they're going to be incited to do the same thing that the others have been doing. They're going to become unstable. Their, their whole organization is going to fall. What happens when it falls? Verse 26. All the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and and all the kingdoms of the world which are upon the face of the earth and the king of Shishak shall drink after them. King of Shishak is referring to the fourth empire that replaces the kingdoms of the earth. So you get this descending crescendo of vitriolic, explosive uh, destruction, destructive influences in the spiritual realm that manifest in the physical realm as a the result is the disintegration, the destruction of the Adamic order. It cannot survive because the driving force has been taken away. The driving force of the Luciferians that erected that thing and manipulate and keep this thing going through the ability that they have to influence the humans. <coughs> when they're taken down, that's it. Turn to Jeremiah, 10th chapter. <clears throat> Verse 11.
Thus shall you say unto them, The gods that have not made the heavens, where it made the Asha, kept, prepared, <coughs> they mismanaged it, the whole thing, that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. Okay. That's the second truth. The gods are the kings in Jeremiah 25, 17 to 26. So the ones under the principalities. The principalities. Okay. All of them are gods. So then some there's... capital G, some small g. Right. But the kings are the gods. Are these what we just read in verse 11, second stringers? Yes. Okay. Yes. Does this verse also refer to the first stringers? No. Okay. So this is the first part of Jeremiah 25, 26. Yes. Gotcha. <coughs> it's talking about the dismantling of the current Luciferian order. <coughs> Notice it says, they shall perish from under these heavens. Mm. So they get taken down to the lowest level here, and then they get taken captive in the subterranean regions. And in that respect, we're seeing the beginning of the dismantling of the second stringer's erection, their <coughs> composition of a pseudo-reality, which has kept the human race in captivity since the fall. So the pseudo oh, strictly refers to that over the human physical. It doesn't apply to what we call nations, or does it? Well, when you say... Non-human nations, I mean. The non-human nations, <coughs> put it this way, those that comprise the non-human nations are stratified. Okay. They were all under Lucifer. Lucifer fell. They came under the second stringers. They are currently under the second stringers, the kings that are dominating the human race, the kings and the gods who have been part and parcel of this system that has enslaved the human race. They're the ones that are drinking the cup. They're the ones that are causing what you're seeing now. The end, verse 26, will be the principality. Okay. They're the last to go. Okay. Strictly referring to verses 17 to 25 of so Jeremiah 25. The nations, the non-human nations that you just outlined, who are under the kings, who are under the principalities, do they ab abide, do they live in the cities which are being destroyed in the spiritual realm? No. No, they have their own abodes. Okay. I made the nations to shake at the sound of his foot. Right. They have Those their own place. habitations. Okay. So what interaction then do they have with the cities which will be destroyed in the spirit? Well, it depends. you got a million different situations there that whatever the principality chooses to gotcha. erect okay. to affect enslaving the human race, that's what he's going to do. And that nation, that entity, that, that intelligence is going to be part and parcel of whatever the principality has designed for that situation. Remember, they're territorial. Mm. Over, the, over the region of Persia, you have <coughs> a kingdom erected. Mm -hmm. You have the kings, which are hierarchical. <coughs> you have the Tsar, prince of the kings of Persia. Mm. Kings of Persia are all principalities. Under them, you have the nations. Okay. The nations are the ones that are coming in contact with the human race from a spiritual level, depending upon the individual's assignment, <coughs> what his duty is, <coughs> he answers to that king, that's that fun. prince. Yeah. That's the way their system operates. Okay. The beings who are who drink water and are comforted in the neither parts of the earth, Ezekiel 31, 16, are they of the same nations that you just described? But, but nations who sided with the Lord and not with Lucifer. Yes. But they're, they're at nation level. They're not at king level. That's what I'm trying to get, get to. Uh, no, no. They're first stringers. So they're, okay. 
You have See? a division. You <clears throat> have some of them are loyal, some that weren't. <clears throat> the ones that were loyal right. are being confident in the new parts right. of the so earth. So we've got to wrestle it out of you, in other words. So I'm just saying <laughs> that. Okay. Well, you have such a hierarchical distribution mm. of authority. Basically, you can divide them into two. Immortals and non-immortals. Oh. None of them are human, but they have distinguishing characteristics that they've been created in and functioning through and under. So they could be <coughs> first string of, second string of kings or <coughs> nations, as we describe them. Yeah. Hmm. The guys in the UFOs are nations. Sure. Okay. The uh, <coughs> greys and all the rest of them are the nations. Intelligences, the, the the serpent races are nations. All of them, that basically <coughs> are not immortal, mm -hmm. are of the nations okay. that Lucifer dominated at one time. Thank you for taking the time to no problem. Explore. Now, having said this, <coughs> we get a general idea here. <coughs> after, after. <coughs> The principalities in the north drink the cup. The kingdoms of the world collapse. Along with that line, this is where you get Matthew 24 and Luke 21. Mm -hmm. At that time, at that, that juncture. Why don't we hear kings of the south? We only hear kings of the north. Uh, is it understood that North and South are together? They're, they're created regions, but the inference seems to be in the southern regions you don't have the degree of activity that you have in the North. Okay. <coughs> now let's go on. Next principle. Scripture indicates in their madness they will have the human kingdoms in upheavals. Turn to Luke 21, verse 9. This is where we are currently. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. This is exactly where we are now. <clears throat> the madness has increased in the spiritual level. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> its influence is increasing in the physical domain. You have the nations, the, the, the armies being moved together for battle. You have this vitriolic uh, <clears throat> communication among nations, warning this, uh, vitriolic criticism of that, um, saber rattling, this is what you have now. And you have, <coughs> you have an increasing because the patrons of the individuals are drinking the cup and the influence that they're under is translating into the human sphere. The people that you see today that are ruling the nations are not ruling from a logical perspective, from a productive perspective. They're moving from a perspective of fear, <coughs> from a perspective of uncertainty, from a perspective of <clears throat> faulty reasoning. Nobody in his right mind would want to engineer an atomic war. Mm. Which is exactly what everybody is heading into and everybody knows it and everybody knows the consequences of anything like that. Just look at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Sure, sure. <clears throat> Anybody in his right mind would have opted for negotiations mm -hmm. to see if something could be worked out. But the ruling genres are operating from a position of 
fear. The deep states that are controlling the West are fearful of losing power because they can see the economy tanking, they can see those of the East getting more and more solidified, more and more stable. The banking corporate interest in this genre, the, 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 the 11 or the 7, whoever it is that consistently meet, mm -hmm. see the fruits of their labors going down the tubes. So they're not operating from a position of wisdom and understanding. They're operating from a knee-jerk position of fear. We've got to hold on to what we got. Where does that fear come from? It comes from the Patreon in the spiritual realm who is also operating under the same illusion, passing it on down to his yeah. patron that he's manipulating. Right. <clears throat> so you get the world being moved in place for what anybody in his right mind can see is, a, is, is unavoidable destruction. Mm. But it's, since the human elite, the globalists that you're referring to, are not privy to the understanding that they are receiving you know, spiritual influence, spiritual manipulation. Mm -hmm. They cannot see, therefore, that they're crazy. They don't know that not. they're mad. Well, no, they, they, they never were free to, to, to see anything anyway. Sure. So, so they've <coughs> never been in that They got place. power through manipulation. Right. They keep it. Everything to them <coughs> is the result of manipulation, which to them sounds logical. Oh, you need to do this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's a darkness element. Yeah. And the Lord is saying in this passage of Scripture, verse 9, where we are right now, the things that are happening right now must come to... Why must they? Come to, because the judgment cup is being passed to the ruling elites mm -hmm. in the spiritual realm. So it's unavoidable. He says when you see this, <clears throat> don't worry about it. It's going to happen. Because things are, the Father has engineered all of this to begin with. It's part of his plan to bring judgment on the Luciferians that have brought judgment on themselves. <clears throat> then he goes on. Verse 10. Notice what it starts with. Then, then nation shall rise against nation, the kingdom against. Then, what is it that is the <clears throat> what is it that connects verse 9 to verse 10 what is it that causes the transition from verse 9 to verse 10 any idea the completion of the drinking of the cup the judgment verse 30 Jeremiah 25 30. the judgment okay. when the Luciferian principalities <coughs> have drunk the judgment cup then all the nations on the earth collapse so the shout of the Lord happens between verses 9 and 10 Thank you. turn Three back to Jeremiah 25 okay. this is intense Richard we love it <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't miss it <laughs> Notice the lead-in. <coughs> we read verse 26. <coughs> the kingdom collapse. It goes on to explain why. Verse 27. Therefore, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink ye, and be drunken, and spew and fall, rise no more, because of the sword which I will send among you. He's talking to the Luciferians. <coughs> the rulers of darkness that have come under the judgment cup. And it shall be if they refuse to take the cup at thine hand to drink then shalt thou say unto them thus saith the Lord of hosts you shall certainly drink for lo for lo for lo I begin to bring evil on the city which is called by my name, and should ye be utterly unpunished. 
This is what's happening now. Israel, <clears throat> with Jerusalem at its capital, is entering into a period, protracted period, of war and instability. Now, let me jump in here very quickly. <clears throat> YHVH referred to the angels slaughtering in that city, which was for that time in that period. Do we see anything similar in the spiritual realm which connects to verses 27 through 30? No. So what spiritual activity, apart from the Lord's voice, tells us that the verse 30 is about to happen physically on the earth? What you read in the scripture, <clears throat> you see the transition from the spiritual to the physical. To the physical. Okay. Then you see the pronouncement of why it's taking place. So from verse 26, in other words, that's where we know. Verse 26 yeah. on to verse 30 is a transition. Okay. <clears throat> from the physical, from the spiritual to the physical. Right. Starting with Israel. The Israel, Middle East is the focal point for all this. I know you t when people talk about uh, Europe and the Pacific regions, all that's hinging on what's going to take place sure. in the Mideast. Sure. <laughs> Verse 30. Therefore prophesy thou against them <clears throat> all these words. Say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout, as they that tread against all the inhabitants of the earth. This is transitioning into the physical, right. from the spiritual. He tells the, the, the principalities, you are certainly going to drink. This is going to happen to you. <laughs> and he's transitioning now to the physical. I have a controversy with <coughs> the humans right. on the earth. Right. Now their turn comes. Mm. And then, <clears throat> verse 30, <clears throat> talks about him precipitating, pronouncing his judgment from his throne. The whole creation is going to hear his voice. And when they do, this is where you get the transition in <clears throat> Luke 21. From 9 to 10. <clears throat> Verse 9. You have the human race under the impetus of beings who are drinking the cup. Wars. Vitriolic hatred. Fightings. Building up to a crescendo. Then you get Verse 10. There's a shift. The, 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 the thrust now ceases and is taking into another direction. Mm. By <clears throat> the judgment. The judgment that's pronounced will be a judgment in which things are set in motion that cause the change. Do you understand that from verse 10, which you just described, or in Jeremiah 25, verse 26, mm -hmm. which we've just gone over, mm -hmm. from there onwards, there is no more need for Elohim Y3H to impact upon a sp spiritual pseudo because they're dealing directly with the earth. Yes. All the way through to the end of the tribulation. Well, not to the end of tribulation. <clears throat> There's no need to deal anymore with the pseudo because the pseudo is destroyed. The mechanism no longer operates. Cannot hold people in captivity anymore. No, you're not talking about the Lucifer, excuse me, the Luciferian pseudo. I was referring to the construct that YHVH made for the city of Jerusalem. Oh, that's out. That's okay. gone. But he doesn't, he doesn't bring back anything. No, like that. Right. no, no. Okay. No. <clears throat> no. Uh, that was another era mm -hmm. that he was dealing with. What you have here is now the precipitation of the release of the first stringers, the Fourth Empire, is going to fill the vacuum. But between the time of the Fourth Empire's release and the demise of the current Luciferian order, you're going to have that <coughs> middle part where the Prototokos comes on the scene. <coughs> so this is what we're looking at. We are now in verse 10 
Then said he, Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. What does this <clears throat> what does this dovetail with? It dovetails with Jeremiah 25, 26. All the kingdoms on the face of the earth are going to collapse, fall. <clears throat> it also deals with the causative effect. You're having a transition with so many things taking place simultaneously. Notice what he says because this is very, very important. If we can connect these scriptures, we get a clearer understanding of what's happening. Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. And famines and pestilence and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. What's happening here? 10 and 11 <clears throat> is the demise of the current Luciferian order and the rise of the first stringers. Daniel, the seventh chapter. Daniel 7, verse 23. <coughs> <coughs> Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Huge, tremendous, mega seismos going from one end of the earth to the other, causing <coughs> mountain ranges to shift causing rift canyons <clears throat> to cease, bringing up regions that were formerly valleys, other regions that were mountain ranges, bringing them down, totally recontouring the configuration of the earth. <clears throat> this commensurate with Luke 21, verse 11, <coughs> Mega Seismos, <coughs> the fourth empire rises as the Adamic kingdoms of the earth fall because it's the fourth empire that's causing the demise of all this. <coughs> the Luciferians in the heavens no longer have influence over the human race on earth. <clears throat> Why? Because they are under judgment. They're taken out of the picture. The humans now are in a state of total consternation. Their influence is rather you're gonna see well you, you you'll see it when you when you experience it. You're gonna find <clears throat> that the atmosphere here <clears throat> is going to radically change. You're going to enter into a reality in which your senses <coughs> are going to be shifted. Your ability to detect, your ability to analyze, your ability to experience is going to be radically different. Why? Because the scripture says so. <coughs> and this explains why technology will disappear because those who promoted it no longer exist. And the conditions are no longer going to be available. Mm. <coughs> Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth which shall be diverse, altered. The conditions of the fourth empire are going to be such as 
bring it will bring in a totally new reality than what you have now, which will add to the uh, <clears throat> inability of humans to function, but it will enable the Luciferians to function because it brings everything to a higher perspective. Consistent with it consistently talks about <coughs> is the diversity. Daniel seven verse seven. <coughs> the emphasis is the same. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold the fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth, it devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns, <coughs> and it goes on. It's diverse, it's altered, it's a pluralistic reality imposed on a linear reality for the first time. <coughs> those who are not in Christ of course they won't understand anything that's going on will they experience physical sickness or pain or anything of that nature as a, purely as a result of the realities going from one to another I'm not talking about as a result of the false empire just the reality itself sure sure I think you're going to have a hard time adjusting because it's an environment that would they were never created to exist in. Right. <coughs> now, Scripture indicates this altered environment will enable humans and non-human intelligences to co-mingle. Daniel 2, verse 43. <coughs> Whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they, the iron, shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. <clears throat> so in the environment, you're going to have the Luciferians <coughs> habitating, cohabitating with the humans which they won't do now because this, this linear environment would be too much of a straitjacket for them. Mm -hmm. Then they will. The humans are going to be limited by the environment. The Luciferians won't. Which will add to their <coughs> enslavement in a way in which <coughs> what you see today wouldn't be a factor. Today, <clears throat> they're enslaved basically through the mental and emotional, the intellectual and the spiritual. Here, everything, physical, spiritual, mental, the whole, the whole shot. They're going to be immersed in an environment for which they were never created. <clears throat> Is that like being possessed? No, it's like being brought into, say for instance, Man is an air breather meant to live on a dry, solid environment, ground. You take that man and you put him in the ocean, he's in a totally different environment. He cannot manifest in. <clears throat> He'd die unless, you know, you were able to pump air to him and enable him to continue. He says, that's going to be the way it is and the fourth empire makes its appearance. He's going to be in a restricted environment that he can't really function in, in which he didn't never allow himself to be prepared for, but yet still there he is. That's why it'd be so easy for the gods 
to uh, <coughs> elicit worship and everything else from mm. the human race. So just being in that reality without being crushed physically you know, through violence, just being in that reality is enough to kill humans. Well, let's put it this way, being in that reality presents dangers mm. that if they're not taken care of can present problems for right. the individual. And by nature, man is going to basically keep himself in a form of isolation because he's afraid, scared to death, not understanding what kind of environment he's in and what's taking. That's why it's so easy to turn over to First Timothy. <coughs> you see an example here. First Timothy, fourth chapter. Verse 1. <coughs> now the Spirit speaketh expressly, so the Spirit is stressing this, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. <clears throat> You're going to receive teaching, instruction, from non-humans about what would benefit a human in this Luciferian environment. And it goes on to talk about uh, what to eat, what to drink, <clears throat> Uh, marriage, not marriage, procreation, they're going to adapt the whole lifestyle to what the Luciferians tell them they need to adapt to to progress in this altered environment. <coughs> These are Christians. Mm. And they're going to be so caught up, it says that they totally leave the faith. So you see, basically, <coughs> the Luciferian, and these are true gods, intermingle themselves with the seed of men, and there's no, there's never been any uh, effort at all for the human race to try to comprehend the truth of the matter. Mm. They're just going to fall right into the Luciferian influence, whatever it is, group they come under. Well, let's go on. <coughs> Scripture teaches the last truth to be given before the human race is totally enveloped by the Luciferian system will be the truth of the kingdom of God. Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, <coughs> then shall the end come. The, the, the curtain falls on um, the human race totally. They totally come under the dominion, domination of Luciferian reality. This is where the Prototokos teachers come in. Matthew 24, 45 and 46. then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household. Now this 
This individual has supernatural protection. Because the Lord in eternity gave him authority to teach at this time. Commensurate commensurate with the individual's will. The Lord will allow him, enable him to go forth and never, never, never be stopped. So since the protocol teacher has supernatural, supernatural protection, mm -hmm. it's operating in supernatural reality because the beginning of science has happened, should we understand that every time he teaches, he's speaking and teaching supernaturally? Sure. Meaning that the recipients, <coughs> the elders, are able to receive and learn in a tiny fraction of the time that we could. Conditions there are radically different from the garbage that you have here. Mm. And yes, <coughs> in a relatively short period of time, they will pick up and they will run with it. Yeah. Continuing on. Whom his Lord hath made rule over his household to give them meat in due season, this time when the X, Y <coughs> axis crosses. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. What is this telling us? Is telling us that the individual that determines he is going to feed God's sheep is going to be pre preserved to the time when the Lord returns. Turn to Luke 21, 36. <coughs> <coughs> Watch ye therefore, most important, key to be able to survive this thing is to be ready for it. That's why consistently, consistently, consistently says watch, be alert. You lose your acuity, you lose where you are, you're going to go down with the conditions that are going to overwhelm this place. So he says watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all, A-L-L, -L, all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Escape all what things? When you take a look at Daniel 7.23, the earth is going to be sectioned by the Luciferians. <clears throat> Every city demolished. Highways impassable. The contour of the planet radically altered. Earthquakes, <coughs> disease outbreaks, wars. Turn back to uh, Jeremiah 25. Verses 32 and 33. Thus say the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. This thing is going to be global. <clears throat> and the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered, nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. <clears throat> the human race is going to be slaughtered from one end of the earth to the other with nobody to bury them. But <clears throat> the Prototokos teacher is going to escape all that. Amen. Amen indeed. Turn back to Luke. Uh, no, turn back to Matthew 24. I'll be closing with this. Verse 
verse 46. Again. <clears throat> Blessed is that servant whom his Lord when he cometh shall find so doing. What is he going to be doing? Feeding God's sheep. Well, how can you feed God's sheep if you're consistently needing to survive all of the conditions that the human race has to endure? Tremendous earthquakes, famines, pestilence, wars, <coughs> egregious slaughter on the part of non-humans against the human race. Who has got time to sit down and feed somebody? Well, you will, because you're going to be supernaturally protected. You're going to be looking like you look. <coughs> you're going to be you ain't hurting for no meal yeah, I don't think so. <coughs> when he comes back, because you need your strength to feed the Lord's sheep. Amen. So that means you're going to have supernatural provision, supernatural protection. All we have to do is to have the will to do it. Because we've been called to do it. So it goes without saying, the Lord doesn't call you to do something you're not equipped to do. Yes, of course.